this something you learned when you were born an entrepreneur? You've got to start small. I have not allowed being a woman to hold me back. Credibility is not just making money, it's about making sure that you know people trust what you're doing. Law practice is not only about going to court, it's about advice. It's very difficult to, to hire somebody who's not motivated and then make them motivated. But one of the things that I'm known for is integrity. They have to see you as a person of integrity. Right. <laughs> Welcome to the Executive Lounge. I'm Inshira Adam. Welcome to the Executive Lounge. I'm Inshira Ado, and uh, this is your preferred thought leadership program that brings you the insights from the lives of men and women who have blazed the trail of either starting and building their own business empires or managing institutions right here at home and around the world. My guest today is a man who's synonymous with the digits 0 to 8. He brought the uh, Celtel uh, network uh, to Ghana. Uh, at a time that uh, the cellular services was just evolving. You know him as Prince Kofi Plugesin. You're welcome to the Executive Lounge, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. So, indeed, you did found um, Celtel, uh, but I'm sure there were lots of other things you were doing in the technology uh, space even before mobile telephony started. Uh, how did it all begin for you? <laughs> You're taking me back to the beginning. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, uh, in my life has been in uh, this um, technology space, you know, starting from a very um, humble beginning, you know. Uh, sometimes I feel ashamed telling you about the story. Oh. Why, I, how I began with only 12 pocket calculators. <laughs> wow. You know, and, um, you know, I came back from the U.S., uh, you know, to... Uh, look around and see mm -hmm. the possibilities of uh, migrating back to Ghana mm -hmm. from Chicago many years ago. And uh, then uh, my field has been computer science. So I tried to go around to look at the, um, the, the opportunities that are available. And uh, so I've been through all the, uh, you, know, you know, companies, those who is all the foreign companies, mm -hmm. NCR, IBM, whatever it is. Uh, but when I went to NCR, you know, and when I was about to leave, uh, the sales manager at the time, you know, uh, you know, wanted to know more about my reason of being there. And he said, well, calculators were about beginning at that time, which were the pocket calculators. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he had asked me uh, whether or not, uh, you know, I could not bring them some pocket calculator if I go back to America. <laughs> so I said, what do you want to do pocket calculator? So there is a demand, you know, for them. So anyway, we had that chat, you know, so I went back to the U.S., and we went in touch, you know, so, and I had to come back to Ghana, you know, my mother had a health problem at the time. So I did bring the pocket calculators. You know, Twelve of them. Twelve of them, <laughs> which I bought from Radio Shack. You, you and your 12 disciples. <laughs> <The> disciples. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was coming, I bought the 12 calculators, you know, when I arrived back to Ghana, then my problem began, you know. So when I sent them to NCR, they said, oh. NCR, they, they, they forgot to tell me that their branch would have been NCR. And they were radio shacks, you know. So I got stuck with the, with the, with the, with the calculators mm -hmm. and also my investment in the calculators. So if I have to go back to Chicago, then I have to do something. And uh, so uh, I have to find a way to, to sell them. And it took me six months, <laughs> you know, to be able to, 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 to sell them. And in the process, you need to uh, register a company, you know. So we register a company called Risk Reason Enterprise mm -hmm. as a sole proprietor business. And uh, began that journey. Uh, but it didn't work out well because it was difficult, you mm -hmm. know. So six months later, I had an opportunity, uh, you know, I was knocking on doors. And uh, so I was then post and telecommunication, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, company, corporation, they call them. So I went there, then I had him. Um, a meeting with the then director general, one, you know, the late Peter Debra. So you had had the secretary that this young man that has been coming to, you know, uh, you know, worry them if they wanted to talk to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we had an appointment for lunchtime, so I went there and uh, he had lunch with me. He said, why am I so persistent, you know, about calculators, you know, you know. I said, well, it's not persistent. I need to go back to America. I don't have any money, you know, so if I don't. Uh, offloaded, you know, that would have been the end 
of uh, you know my my trips. Mm -hmm. So he we had a long chat. He got interested to know where I came from. I told him I was from Harvard. From Harvard. I said, oh, you're from Harvard. Oh, his very good very good friend was also he's also from Harvard. So he mentioned the name. So he began the, uh, the 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 relationship. So he invited a chief accountant, who said, oh, they needed the calculators and also plus desktop calculators. <laughs> So it was kind enough to, you know, so that was the first acquisition of my calculators by PNT at mm -hmm. the time. And then they went ahead and also, had, you know, ordered, uh, you know, desktop calculators, mm -hmm. you know, which uh, I didn't have. So when I, that transaction completed, you know, uh, the, I went back to NCR, you know, so, well, this is what happened. And they said, well, the, the assigning facet, so the place was Sweden where the, the source was. So I found myself in Sweden trying to look for calculators, you know, uh, you know, with a thousand dollars in my pocket, you know, after the sale of mm -hmm. these ones. But when I got to Sweden, I didn't even know where to go. So I uh, landed in a hotel called Hotel Terminus. So the name they gave me, so I started calling all the numbers. Nobody was responding, you know. So about 10 p.m. that day, when I was about to leave the next day, and I had a call from a gentleman called uh, Gunnar Eriksson. He said, look, um, I received your calls. Are you from NCR? And I said, no, so what are you doing in Sweden? You know? And I said, well, I'm here to buy calculators. <laughs> you know, you know? So for no reason, it's OK, I'm coming to see you. And I'm sure I, that was where the blessing began. Mm -hmm. The gentleman came in, and I'll be the chairman of Electro Lux, mm -hmm. you know, who were the producer manufacturers of the company. You know? Uh, and he said, well, we cannot give you Facet because Facet is a uh, exclusive NCR. But there's another product called ADDO, A-D-D-O. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you don't mind, you can be able to, you know, since we came all the way here, we'll not let you go. But he said, it was very interesting, a young man like you, you know, very persistent, you know, wanted to do this. So I was sending some boys, you know, the next morning. That's what he said. That was exactly his word. Those were turned out to be the director of finance, you know, of the company <laughs> and the director of marketing, mm -hmm. who came to the hotel and had a long chat with me. And uh, they said, well, do you mind trusting us with your thousand dollars? Because you, you cannot do a whole lot, mm -hmm. you know, but if you like trusting us. So I said, okay, take it, I'm here already. So that turned out to about six desktop calculators. So I left for the States and they shipped it to Ghana and I had to come back to Ghana. And the rest is history. So, wow. You know, so, so you okay. started with yeah. uh, the, the desktop, basically the calculator yeah. business. Yeah. And then at some point, you also brought uh, Hewlett Packard yes. to Ghana. So when I began that journey to calculators, then you move on to manual typewriters, to electric typewriters. So as and when, uh, you know, so it got somewhere where we became, you know, the, 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 the local uh, Ghanaian company, creating enterprise. So we have to move from sole proprietor to to uh, a limited know, liability, liability company. company. So we informed Kulis International Limited, you know, which, you know, went through. So we began that journey. So we, and we are the only local company, of course, Maasai, you mm -hmm. know, also, you know, you know, came in with IBM, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. So we became, you know, me local company, and then Wang, you know, a lot of local companies yeah. at that time, Wang and uh, Compute Data. So we focused, you know, on, on, on to typewriters, to photocopiers, so both of the equipment, like Sharp and Company, they all came through our hands, That's you right. know, in terms of introduction into the, in, in the country. Uh, so we got to a place where computers were emerging, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, IBM is here already. Um, all the international companies are here, you mm -hmm. know. So the only one that was left was uh, HP. You know, it was called Hewlett Packard at that time. Right. It was a very difficult name. So we pursued, you know, and then with that, in Ghana one day when uh, we had a call. Uh, we had information that a gentleman is coming to visit us. So we're there in Awusu, you know, called High Tech House, our mm -hmm. building. Yeah. So they came to visit us and they went to all the Rimaro, Rimaro, and they said, well, we think that since we're experienced in, uh, in our equipment, they would like to see whether they can try mm -hmm. as to do the computers. Mm -hmm. So we began the computers with, I think, two PCs at the time, <laughs> you know. And as, you know, blessings came, we became the largest, you know, computer company, mm -hmm. you know, focusing on HP. Yeah. Uh, various innovations, you know, trying to transform Ghana to the technological country at the time and uh, trying to train a lot of, uh, but then there was a breaking point, you know, you know, for us at the time where we realized and recognized that, you know, one of the major things that was happening at the time is that people don't know how to use computers, you know, so they buy computers, you know, so there were a lot of issues. 
So uh, there were a lot of control systems at that time called organization and methods. Mm -hmm. So how do we leapfrog or you know, overcome this ecosystem where things were not moving? So we recognized it was a revolutionary time at the same That's time. Right. It was not easy. So we decided, OK, the problem was training. So I spoke to HP, the lab. is there any training in methods or tools? Mm -hmm. uh, because the US, before you use computer, you have to be trained. That's you know? right. So uh, they said, OK. So we started a small training school called the Cruise Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we said, OK, let's train secretaries, because they are the one that you go through before things are bought. So we challenged the system. It was difficult. So we tried to take the bigger risk to train the president, uh, Rollins secretary. You know, you know, for the first one to took we took to that it's Elizabeth, mm -hmm. uh, who ended up to be Baba Kamara's wife, you know, today the former national security. So it went well as a single training, you know, and then a PV of Bernie secretary. So it's okay. Then let's train all the secretaries, you know, the PNDC members, uh, you know, so that they know how to manage, you know, because it was not easy at that time. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> from one to it became a very major successful, you know, you know, you know, training that we did. And, and then one thing led to the other. The World Bank invited us. Uh, why are you doing this? This is becoming successful because it's creating an impact, mm -hmm. you know, on the uh, society. And then the same, then the HP brought an opportunity. Okay, since we are training them, then they can train. We can pick one or two of them. The UK to be trained, you know, uh, you know, give them extra training. See, it's government, you know. So Elizabeth and uh, uh, Felicity, who were their names at that time had to go, you know, to, to, to the UK, to Reading. And then when they were coming back, they brought HP, they gave the HP laser printer, and that became the breaking point. So when the, um, the, the, the speeches or whatever it is, or the then president, Rollins was printed on HP, the, the, it became evolutionarized, <laughs> you know, because the script. So now they're being printed uh, and, uh, you know, printed, typed you know, and printed. And printed, you know, the whole thing changed. So it became a very major, major successful story. So mm -hmm. we had to train almost all the civil service, you know, you know, department by department by department. So I remember we did a very, very major graduation at that time at the, at the State House, mm -hmm. where I went to the University of Ghana. So how do we create the U.S. type of graduation, mm -hmm. you know, and create, you know, an aura, you know, in the economy to, to the economy was tense at the time, you know. So how do you change the, the situation so that people can, can relax? Mm -hmm. So I went to Legon and I met one professor Fishin, who was the head of psychology. So I told them my story. It's a young man, you know, we're hearing about your past. What do you want me to do for you? I mm -hmm. said, well, we want to see whether we can be able to do what we call American graduation in Ghana, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, you see what he can do to help us. So he gathered some of his uh, team together. And then, so we did it at the banquet hall. So we did the big advertisement in the newspapers, uh, Castle, Miss Education, all those that we trained, mm -hmm. department by department. Mm -hmm. And the rule was that to come, you you have to wear you know you know black tie, you mm -hmm. have to dress properly, you know all of them. So that was one day where a collection of a lot of brody wahoo <laughs> <laughs> just to get a the lot black of tie, wahoo, to you know, to, to qualify. The, that's right. <laughs> to be in there with their parents, you know. So they came in, and that was the major beginning of Kulijes International mm. and well, That's a very intriguing story. Yeah. Um, I mean, then later on, you would have started, you know, Celtel. Uh, gone into yeah. the mobile telephony space. But one interesting thing I'm, uh, I've noticed in the story is that you kept, you know, following technology. You were yeah. abreast with technology. Um, but you also showed an entrepreneurial knack, you know, that not only did you see technology evolve, but you also looked at how can it be leveraged to help business and, of course, build your own business. Um, today, would a young man or a young woman looking at growing off the back of technology, do you think would have had the kind of um, support that they got that they could talk to people who were willing to listen to them? What was the culture at that time compared to today? You see, uh, in Ghana today, uh, uh, my, one of my biggest challenges uh, is you know the appreciation of the next generation that I call. You know, we are not appreciating our next generation like it used to be. And that, I think, is also having a very major impact on the economy, you know, and the stress in Ghana today. Because, you know, those days, you know, there were a lot of, lot of consultations. There were a lot of, you know, interventions. There were a lot of, like I told you, I went to the University of Ghana trying to seek help. And I was directed to Professor Fishan, whom I don't know. And he was interested in me. I met Mr. Peter Debra, the late. Both of them are late today. By listening to me today, they were prepared to help, 
and they helped me. But today it's not like that, you mm -hmm. know. So you know, so that knack of that absence of that is what Ghana need to bring back, you know, to the what I call the next generation. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the knack of uh, I want to go into business, I want to make money, you know, replaces entrepreneurial skills. Because nobody goes to business to make money. It's, it's the wrong step. Mm -hmm. it's the, you, know, to, you, know, you, you need to go and build capacity before profits will come. <laughs> you know, but if you want to go with them to make money, you, 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 you lose out from day one mm -hmm. you know, as a concept. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is that you know, people think that they're already educated, so they don't need any knowledge. Uh, when you interview people today, you know, I was interviewing some young lady you know, the other day. Uh, as I was talking about how is your parents, how is your family, whatever it is, she got offended. And she said, uh, sir, I thought I came for an interview. And I said, yes, you are an interview. Why are you asking me about my parents or whatever? What do they have to do? You know, I said, OK, so why are you here? I said, well, look at my uh, resume. I have a master's degree. I have an MBA in marketing. Mm. I thought that's what I might be talked about. So I said, OK, assuming that there is a uh, risk today about you, who would I call? <laughs> you know, uh, instead of call my parents, of course. I said, but if I don't know about your parents or your family, and the linkages, so how would I call them? Then it dawned on her that, look, you know, the relationship between, you know, my education, my background, has also to do with my foundation, you know, my embodiment of my mm -hmm. psychic, mm -hmm. you know. So we finished the whole thing, and she sent a beautiful uh, WhatsApp to me, thanking me that, look, I reconnected back to my family, I thank you so much. <laughs> you know, this missing link today in Ghana, in, in all aspects, the economy, the politics, is one of the major things, I think, of my background and things I continue to do mm -hmm. is the absence because relationships are uh, giving way to other issues, you know. And I believe there's a, there's a way, there's a need to be able to, to find a way to mitigate that, mm -hmm. you know, to make Ghana a very beautiful country, you know. So uh, uh, that is what I think, you know, you know, the, you know, counseling is absent, you know, people do not want to talk, mm -hmm. they don't want to approach anybody. If I approach the Kuruji saying, he might tell me I should start this way and I'm not prepared to do that mm, way, so I will not mm, go. Mm. You know, so it's really creating a lot of problems. And Ghanaian, we are losing it. You know, um, the Ghanaian, you know, they are very brilliant, you know, today, more brilliant than themselves, but they are not achieving the goals, you know, that they should achieve, mm -hmm. you know, as prepared to, especially in my industry. Yeah. You know, if you look at Ghana today, Ghana really, really today, uh, we've lost it if you don't leave rock to digital technology. I totally agree you know, with you. Uh, you know, if you don't leave rock, we, we just lost it. You know, and that had to happen ASAP. Mm -hmm. you, you know, because you see, when you look at Ghana today, there are three and a half million people in universities. You have free SHS, 500,000. Where are they going to go in three years' time? You know, they're not going to go to my village, Harvard, to work in the factory there, as it's been said. And let there's a technology there, you know, to, to make that to work. make it happen, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, even if they are there, how would they be connected? <laughs> you have brilliant doctors. You have brilliant, you know. I mean, whatever space you are, you know, look at the media from nowhere. We see started this. We all began at Ninja. Look at where it has reached consistently. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, th this is the space we have for Ghanaian age. You know, we talk a lot about agriculture, you know, uh, in Ghana today, and I listen to agriculture and I look at the revenue from cocoa. Cocoa brings, according to that city, only $2 billion in share. So what is $2 billion? $1 million acres. And Heshiba, that has maybe a million you know, acres of factory, brings over $50 billion in terms of revenue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, what are we talking about? You know, we talk about oil revenues. How much is it? You know? So and Ghana is wealthy, you know, you know, when you look at the, 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 the digital space. You know, even applications alone, <laughs> you know. So, so in essence, we have, if we don't use technology uh, and, and embed it in how we harness our local um, talent and our natural resources, we'll always stay, you know, lag behind. We have already been behind, and there's no way that we are going to, we are, we are going to do some antennas we live for. There must be a pragmatic by somebody like you or me or someone that will move in. You say, look, technology is not a telco, you know, you know, as we started many years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different ball game in the brain, what yeah. we call knowledge base, you yeah. know. And some little boys sit somewhere in a room and they have what they call app. Mm -hmm. And the app becomes somebody pay twenty billion dollars for it or one billion dollars for it because you can do this, can do this, can do that. You know, so that is the advantage Ghana has. You okay. see, when I look at Ghana today from AGI DC today. I've always said my own background, you know, whom am I to be what I am, you know, if not because of the help of the people and the young people that I manage, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, if you, if, if you go into this space that we are, you can see that the largest economy in the world is a digital space, 
you know, you know, I mean, I mean if you look at when Bill Clinton and Al Gore came to power, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton got stuck. So he approached Al Gore and said, what do we do? So Al Gore brought this, you know, Infosys, you know, they call it at the time, and mm. challenged the kids in America, what do you want to do? Mm. And she said, they drop out of Harvard. <laughs> you know, Bill Gates drop out of Harvard, Facebook drop out of Harvard, and they do what their instincts want to tell them, here we are today. They are employing Harvard people <laughs> to run their businesses. <laughs> to run their businesses. Yeah. Because that's what they know. The Harvard people, the MBA, the PhDs in Ghana, they know how to do what they do. You know, you yeah. just uh, landed on a, on a point that uh, I had a conversation with somebody about, you know, Africa and, and unicorns like the Facebooks of, of today and, and all these other things. Um, but we're going to go into that in a moment. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'll explore your thoughts on what kind of an ecosystem we need to be able to create unicorns to help us leapfrog. This is the Executive Lounge. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the Executive Lounge with me in Chirado and my guest, Dr. Prince Kofi Klujasin. He is the uh, CEO and founder of Celtel Networks Limited. Now, I'll explain that to you in a moment. Uh, it's different from Celtel Limited, which was the telecoms company, and we'll get into that in a moment. But, you know, you just talked about how um, under uh, President Clinton's uh, administration, they challenged lots of young people um, to go into the technological space. And today we have Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got Uber, you name it. Technology has changed the way we do things forever. Now, Africa has been called the next frontier for the simple fact that we have lots of young people and that number is set to double. Not only will it double, but we have some bright sparks here. However, we can't boast of a single unicorn. In your estimation, what has to be done for us to be able to see these unicorns pop up so we can actually see the potential uh, of leapfrogging anything? You see, the biggest problem in Ghana today is that the government and people are blind to what creates wealth. You know, they're really, really blind to it. Uh, you know, wealth is created by laws or legislation, you know. I remember very well when in Google you see when the, the, the current president came to meet AGI, uh, you know, trying to solicit our support if he manifest to, I reminded him that, you know, uh, I think that when he takes, he wins the election, what I think he should focus on, because in AGI, when you get to AGI conference room, you see the pictures of all the, we, the past the presidents, past presidents. All, all that. So I asked him, Mr. President, can you please look behind you? and see what you see. These are all the unicorns that I met. Today, they are no more there. The reason why they are not there in Shira is not because we did not try, mm. because the legislation did not protect us. You know, there, there, there is something, there's a law we call equity laws, you know. Uh, Sri Maposa, you know, tried it in South, South Africa. He pulled out the politics mm -hmm. and organized with the Kota Black Empowerment, mm -hmm. which allowed them to have a 30%, you know, equity mm -hmm. as black people, not even as Indians or whatever, mm -hmm. as, you know. Just as the, black, South, black South, Africans. South Africans. In, in Malaysia, they have 35%. In the U.S., it's 85% content. Here, we only really went as far as content. We tried very hard, I was then a year as president, to push to get this legislation done so that we can be empowered. You look, I mean, the vice president did a very wonderful thing. I saw the other day was something called Oracle at Accra Digital Center. When I was watching those boys, it reminded me of my life 30 years back. Then I said, okay, 30 years from today, what will, what will happen to those boys? They'll be eliminated. Because these gentlemen, they're going to go to Saab, Oracle, whatever. What are they going to get out of it? Once those patents, are, they don't know how to do patent, they don't know how to copyright, they don't know how to do these things. And these children has presented massive you know, developments, you know, you know, you know, on TV, I saw, you know, you know, yeah. on your TV. That's right. So what is needed ASAP is not banking issues, you know, it is quickly go and do legislation. Look, when banks are collapsing in Ghana, they cannot raise 400 million in it's, it's a very sad situation because the names behind those banks in Ghana who are Ghanaian entrepreneurs cannot raise only 400 million cities or neither bring strategic partners to meet to those meet requirements. requirements. It's a yeah. very sad situation in Ghana. 
It's a very black spot. So we're missing out on wealth creation. It and, is and, a and key you think factor. legislation is the way it's to go? It's all about legislation. Because look, if the law says that we Ghanaians are insurer, I mean, because you know, we're struggling. It's not easy to pay all of you and have a profit. You know, I mean, where's the value? It's not on the stock exchange. It's not easy to get there. But look at how long he's been doing this as a company. Nobody helps in a borrow money at 26% or 30% to be able to pay something the payroll. It doesn't happen. Now. There's no way. Look, you know MTN and all those are owned by, by the black empowerment companies. Mm -hmm. You know, all the companies in South Africa today are owned by the black empowerment company that leads the party. Look, all over the world, this is what happens. Those gentlemen, those ladies, those young people at the Silicon Valley, they go by venture capital mm -hmm. and equity. Amazon just went for a divorce. He owns only, I think, 14 or 16 percent of the whole company, mm -hmm. and he's the richest in the world. Others own the rest because there are legislation that require those things to happen. So I reminded the president that when you go to office, I think look at that, change the company. Look, our company's culture is 50 years old, mm -hmm. 1963. <laughs> you know, and if you want to go and you know, you know, you know, start with the company today, you are going to be guided by that by rules that are decades old. Decades, 50 years old. So when a foreigner comes and look at that goal, they override you. Which are a lot of all these that are happening in the country. They override you. What is the, what, first, what's your valuation? Mm -hmm. they, they first go for valuation. And our equity, our shares have no power value by law. Mm. So you, you really have nothing inside. And majority of people, when they want to raise this company, 50 years, you don't even know to do what to do. If you look at research and all the things, they are turning around. You registration this, portal this, portal that. How does that create value for the company? Everything in Ghana is punitive by regulatory. You know, regulatory must not be punitive. Look at the number one should issue. Should be more as an enabler. You see, look at the number one issue, whatever. whatever. When I sit down, that young man, I, 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 I cry for him. I was at, I was at his level. Why should, he ha why should we manage that way? Look, if an American citizen is having this problem, the American government will go to Dubai and bring that and protect him first. <laughs> you understand? No matter whatever he has done, there are many, many people who believed in him and put their money in there. So regulatory must find a way to deal with that issue. Why did they believe in him? That's the first, and the first catalyst thing we must think about. I was there. You know, I was nobody. My father died when I was 11 years old. You know, by the grace of God, this is what I am. So when Ghanaians have problems, we should go to their aid, find, clear that problem first, and then put them through the legal system. It must not always be penitent. Laws might be. Look, that's not one problem. I could have solved it if I'm a chairman, if I give the opportunity. What is it? Everybody freezes for the next one year. <laughs> you know, let's see how we can sort it out. Because government is going to find money, whatever it is, to solve it, to sell assets or whatever. How were those assets created? It's from his innovation and initiative and most of these people. So are the next generation of the Ghanaian young people. The banks, you know, we spend, I don't know, $12 billion, whatever the amount is, to bail out banks. But don't forget, the president's vision is not being achieved. Mm -hmm. No, should we need to have used those money to achieve the one million dollars per district, <laughs> the the you know, the, the free SHS, the one factory per district? Mm -hmm. Now those money, if they were to resolve those problems, should we have been here today and provide equity? I can government say for another look, I want people to do two hundred and sixteen factories. I a government that provide thirty percent equity, you know, so that uh, you know, and then you can raise the debt to finance the to rest. Finance the rest. The factory rubbing belt. You know, what, I mean, if, if when you go to China, all the Chinese business, when you go to China, you don't see China government doing anything. It's the same private sector companies. But the Chinese government, because of their laws and equity law, they back their private companies. <laughs> you understand? We send all these acronyms, you know, hydro, whatever it is. You don't see Chinese government building roads. It's the private company that come to do so. But the government stands with them. By and you. Walk into you know, the fathers stand by their children. Mm. Parents stand by their children. Go Why do you someone. think that we've not been able to do that? Because I'm sure inherent in every Ghanaian is the love of the next Ghanaian and that we truly would like to see each other do well. Have we created certain strictures that are holding us back? You see, look, from my generation to today and what I see around, uh, I've always stopped by, by my own self. Uh, when I tell people I didn't have opportunity to go to secondary school, nobody believes me. But that's the truth because uh, that was the day I had my chop box by the roadside. I was going to be sure, hey, man. I was called. My father died that same day, 
And my uncle said, well, you know, my father was a chief. So one of the comments was that, you know, for Togwe children, they drink a lot of tea, whatever it is, so we cannot do that. But I lost that opportunity. Sometimes I get very ashamed when I go to programs. They say, if I him, you know, whatever it is. And then, oh, where do you go? Then I have to say, I went to have a tank, you know, my village. You know, it, it, it's a very, but today here I am. So we pass that. So how do we be able to resolve these issues? Look, what is happening here today in Ghana today? Ghana has a lot, a lot of wealth, a lot of sovereign wealth, a lot of money. I don't, whatever happened, it will always be there. You know why? The oil will always be there. When you drink this one, there'll be 10 more holes that will come up. When there'll the diamonds here, there'll be 10 more that will come up. So it will always be there. But Netanyahu will tell you that, look, today it changed from that to precision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Netanyahu says that many years ago, nobody wanted to talk to Israel. They were involved with all these pilgrimage problems, whatever it is, agriculture, nobody wanted to talk to them. But today, the world had to deal with Israel because of technology. Because in all the technologies, artificial intelligence, Israel is in there, <laughs> you know. So I think that's where Ghana has reached right now. If you look at Rwanda today, everybody talks about Rwanda. I was there, you know, Rwanda, which in 2020 program, the Ghana's ICT policy was taken to Rwanda, written by Ghanaian authors, and here's Rwanda today. They are leaving Ghanaians who wrote that report, you know, you know, Professor Didonu, another lady here today. You know what? They, read, they, they created the Rwanda So issue. they saw value in what we have. Of course. And used it to Everybody turn their did. economy around. You what see? do you think is our problem? Why have we not been able to? So we were able to think the plan, but we didn't actualize it. So what happened in between I'll give you a story. plan and execution? I led a, a delegation from OPIC, uh, you know, one day to Uganda, uh, overseas, the U.S., mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when I was past president as an offer, to Uganda. So we went to Uganda, Museveni. And Doki okay, are serving all this. Oh, I have a very, very a brilliant gentleman who is really helping to transform Ghana's economy. Uh, they are bringing him uh, to Uganda's economy to give you uh, whatever answers you wanted. And she, uh, we're sitting there. My thoughts a Ugandan guy is Mr. Labishan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. Labishan that was brought in. So he said, Oh, coffee, what are you doing here? He said, no, no. Then the president, Oh, do you know him? I said, Of course, I know him. He's my brother. And that was it. The Ghanaian Labisian was resolved, you know, and the president recognized him. The president recognized Labisian in Uganda. So you see, it's interesting you say this. There are Ghanaians who are building the world, except their home. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you think is the reason? You see, only this week, I'm told that uh, Kagame mm -hmm. has appointed a Ghanaian, you know, uh, Swanika. Yeah, yeah for Swanika. Some, Swanika or something, you know. In a, you know, you see, it, it, Ghana, the government of people m m must, 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 must recognize that, you know, Ghana is the only country that we can, even the politicians, we can talk to them because they are friends, they are mm -hmm. classmates, they are brothers and sisters. So what is the issue? There must be that coercion, that concession, that meeting the, of the minds, you know, to do things. You see, look, one of the things that I like to look at in Ghana when it comes to politics, you know, in my experience all over the world, when politics is finished, government takes over. It becomes what we call government, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so when, the, you know, my village DC wanted to speak in Have, he said, oh, Akufuado, and then Akufuado says this. And I wonder, why did he tell you to say that? <laughs> you know, what about you, the district executive, you know, who, who's in charge of that is appointed by him? Uh, did he give you a phone call to do those things? You, you understand? You see, we, we need to be, you know, our childhood days, I don't know about yours, we, we, we know who the regional commissioner is, we know who the district, you know, commissioner is. And these were people who were empowered. Empowered, you so, know, and they So our things. politics has disenfranchised the very people that it's supposed to serve. Yes, you know, so we, we need to really look back. Maybe things are happening now, the president said, Virginia, let's get together, and the peace council, let's get together. Maybe those getting back together, you know, me, I'm very confident in Ghana and the next generation in the things that I do. Uh, you know, so I'm very confident that. But I think that we need to have a breaking point mm. to be able to say, look, it's not working, or it's working too well, or it's not working too well. Mm -hmm. Let's see whether we can be able to. Look, if my brother can afford the means of finance, working so hard, can use Ghana's name and go outside to. to Pick three billion, and he got twenty-two billion. Mm -hmm. What is he telling you? He's telling you that Ghana is rich. 
Ghana is wealthy. We are ready to that go. That the people feel there's enough. They have, for, for, yeah. to, they have confidence in. Yeah, in I think I don't really want to put in the political, mm. in the connotation, mm. or, you know. But it tells you that look, look, our children. When you go outside, mm. you know, I mean, my daughter was in, in Wall Street, you know, Morgan Stanley. Uh, there are about 15, 20 of their friends that work there. They are young people, but they are managing billions of dollars as, as fund managers. You, you understand? You know, so are many, many people's children. Yeah. You know. Uh, so can we give them opportunities, you know, also uh, uh, let them, not only because he's, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, treasurer of Kofi's party in Chicago, so he got an appointment in the Kofi's government. I don't think that should be the issue. Let's give opportunity to our next generation, you know, you know, you know, children. So are you saying that we should look at competence over loyalty? See, loyalty, competence, they are the same things. Okay. You know, awesome. yeah, you know, competence and knowledge are the same thing. You have to believe in somebody, you don't have to believe in your children. Okay. You know, and don't you agree to be competent? So where does the uh, the, the line draws? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, you see, look, I'm telling you when we get back to my business and what I'm doing now, you see a lot of young children. The kind of proposal I get on a daily basis, you'll be amazed what is happening today. Mm. How do we move Ghana to the next digital economy? Yeah. You know, Let's learn some lessons from your own journey. I mean, at one point we had uh, Millicom um, and Celtel, and then what today is MTN, uh, Skancom. Uh, I think they were the third into the market, right? Yeah. Um, and at the time, there was just a three. Yeah. You know, you either had a 027, a 028, or a 024. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, today you would look back and Millicom has grown, acquired Tigo or merged. Um, Scancom has grown, gone through a number of transformations to become MTN today. Um, but it's as though the Celtel story ended with Kasapa. Yeah. Uh, what happened? What, what are the lessons? Okay. You know, today people talk about MTN. They talk about Scancom, they talk about Melicom, they talk about all this. They don't know who the owners are. They are not Ghanaians. We struggled, we began, we got all the rights to it. Richmond Agri, Richard Daku, myself, the president himself was Melicom. You know, the president started Melicom, <laughs> and the president himself. Where are we? Celta, which became Casapan Espresso. Somewhere down the line, the law says that we must give up what we are doing and bring what they call foreign investors in it by law, not by choice. <laughs> you understand? Ghana Telecom started first, with, I think they had one touch. Mm -hmm. So Malaysia Telecom, they came 30%, the government got, you know, you have said the government has 30%, it messed up. They went on to Nortel, <laughs> you met, uh, went to Westel, Zane, you know, even the current minister, you know, of communication mm -hmm. was the chief executive of Zane <laughs> many years ago. He went at Westel, all, Westel, at Westel the time before okay. Zane, yeah. All this landed in court. Why? Because that's what I tell you about the issue of lack of equity law or legislation to protect those investment. Look, I mean, uh, uh, Richmond Agri eventually went in court, court, court. Out of $400 million, for valuation of 20%, he got only 54. <laughs> Hezi got 14, and then eventually he died two weeks later. <laughs> we chose, you know, to stay on without sacrificing our rights, you know, as a Ghanaian, you know, to money, you know. And it was not, it's not been easy for me, we've been through. But today we've been blessed with that honesty, that truthfulness, and focus on what we believe we do for Ghana. Mm -hmm. Today we are being blessed with a whole new situation with the same people. You know, what? we gave 80% out at that time. We said, take 80%, we keep only my new 20%. Look at all that wants to happen. I don't have to go through it. It all has to do with rights, laws, and legislation, mm -hmm. and what they call majority shareholder. It doesn't exist in this business. Because like I'm telling you, Facebook, Bill Gates, and all of them, they don't own majority of their share. They own the minority by rights <laughs> to do things. Because money must come in. Rights must also be protected by laws. You see, like I'm telling you, great scale of Sidi Ramaphosa, if you mm -hmm. go to MTN, who owns MTN? You know who owns MTN. You own who, who, who owns DSTV. So even though they are individual, if you look at Mo Ibrahim, today he had to sell out, collect them money, you're doing interviews with mm -hmm. Ali Dankote. <laughs> but that apex you know, of the whole of the African is gone. The one of who is trying right now is uh, the, our friend in uh, Zimbabwe, 
uh, you know, uh, liquid, mm -hmm. you know, uh, echo, echo net. The, um, Strive. Strive, Strive was in court for the yeah. same problem for many years. But again, you know, telecoms and all these, they are all legal environments. So people like me, I don't worry too much about it. Uh, you have to learn from those who are ahead of you and what they did. You know, one day I was watching television with TD Jakes, you know, and he said, you know, when things are becoming difficult, you cannot carry the load, walk away and go to another journey. You know, and that changed my life, <laughs> you know, because, you know, we last year, last year, we, when they took over the old Casapa or Express, whatever you call mm -hmm. it, you know, there were all a lot of illegalities, you know. My spirit as a Ghanaian, because when we come on this, we said we'll do it for Ghana, not for illegalities. Mm -hmm. But we went and took over the company. The day I went to Israel, I cried. I already shared moments of, of emotions. That was when my new partner, Cisco engineers from India, they were here. And uh, they, we went back and they said, okay, look, uh, go home, come back the next day. When I went, uh, share moments of grief with me and say, you know, Doc, you don't have to worry about the past. Let's begin today and move on to the next level. Mm. Because all we saw yesterday is gone. It's gone. Today has come. Let's move to Ghana to a digital solution. Mm -hmm. And in Shirai, from today to today, it's a whole different ball game. So what, what, are you, what, so what are you moving on to now? For you, the lesson is that trouble will come, but you still have to move on. Yes. So what's the next level? Okay, the next level, which is a very exciting uh, level, you talk, you talk about young people mm. <laughs> today, uh, is a, it's a very major you know, project that is about happening. You know, um, see, when you look at uh, Ghana today, you know, we are trying to move Ghana from uh, you know, what you call an analog economy to digital economy. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the space of digitalization today, you know, the telcos cannot handle it. Uh, you know, uh, tel telcos, you know, 4G, LTE, cellular, whatever, the game has changed. The game has changed to, you know, Internet of Things, Internet of Everything. Everybody must have Internet or Wi-Fi at home, wherever you are in Ghana, first row. Everybody. Like the Minister of uh, Communication also said that he, he wishes that by the year 2020, every Ghanaian must have a smartphone, mm. <laughs> you know. That is where we are today, because that is the tools of wealth, the tools of development, the tools of moving Ghana to the next level. Now, if the president is doing wonderful well with all this free SHS business, now we run into Amok, you know, about uh, double track, mm -hmm. you know, single mm -hmm. track, whatever you call it. But those kids must have to have a tablet and be connected to the internet. Right. There must be a learning platform from those kids, wherever they are, whether they are in my village or your village, whatever it is. That would empower them. You know, every house in Ghana today must have a television, it must have a Wi-Fi, you know, because that is where people learn from. You see, Ghana is late from 2015 to digitalization, I think digital migration mm -hmm. from 2015 is not even implemented yet. So we have this lag. We still, we still have a big lag behind that. We have a huge lag behind. That lag has about over 10 million analog TVs. That need to be replaced. You know, we travel, I've been traveling, you know, very much throughout the whole country with my team to the north, everywhere. We were in Wechow, you know, a town in the northern region, uh, Upper West, I think. Mm -hmm. And one of our team members from India said, let's visit the homes of the young, you know, people. And uh, we did do that exercise. One of the questions she asked, uh, how come there are no television in the, in the uh, abodes? Mm -hmm. So the children love television, not here, you know. So we decided that one of the major things that we, we must put one million you know, TVs in, in everybody's you know, you know, you know, home uh, with Wi-Fi enabled. So that project is being developed you know, you know, right now and it should be ready by, I think they'll finish by next week. Uh, we want to see whether we can be able to put Wi-Fi in every country uh, you know, there's something called smart cities. In every home in the country? In every home in this country. Okay. Uh, there's something called smart cities, you know. Without the, the fundamental connectivity, you can't have smart cities. Yes, so this uh, connectivity will be provided. Mm. Uh, so we almost finished the development. We'll be engaging the Ministry of Communication, data, the regulators, you know, to sell all this a new technology that has to come, where would it be positioned in yeah. our laws? You know, wow. and uh, we, we hope that it's a $300 million, you know, project in the offing. And we hope that we'll be able to lift Ghana to the next level of e-digitalization of economy mm. and empower a lot of young people. As a result of that, yeah, we will be operating from 35 Place as a new building, you know, near Talo. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a very major project. And every day of the day in Shira, 
we are getting a lot of people joining the consortium. Only as it's early as last week, mm -hmm. we had a major company from the UK called PCW uh, Global. When we met the NCA, Mr. Anoche was very kind enough uh, to tell us that, look, you know, Ghana, to do this project, we need a big pipe. I didn't even know what the pipe was. I thought it was a water pipe. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I had to realize, you know, it, it, it's a cylinder sea cable, Ghana lacks capacity mm -hmm. for, for internet. So we went for, you know, for, for the world, and finally we managed to get a white people main one, Google, C squared, mm -hmm. and also PCW Global, okay. to see how we can bring. So they were here to bring up what they call a 100 gig capacity of the country, you know, which we concluded very soon. And uh, that will be- Because of course, that's going to be the basis on which you connect to the wider everybody. world. And also, we also have one of our partner Hughes that bring his satellite on board okay. to connect everywhere. Because my goal is that to be able to live this and walk away, there must be internet everywhere in Ghana, okay. every corner of the ecosystem. That's a very bold you know, dream to there. have. So satellite coming in, we have come beyond that, bringing mm -hmm. radio. But whatever the technology is, it's a hybrid. hybrid. And uh, it's happening. And uh, we hope that by the time we finish the other policy by engaging the ministry, uh, we, like, we want to collaborate you know, with government and the mm -hmm. ministry because, and in all the districts. You know, when you go around the district, you realize that it's difficult. You know, uh, you know, you know Yala pay something through gift mix. Sometimes, you know, there are no stuff lying after the Accra, it's finished. Some of, yeah, so you know, there, there's blue. a need for the connectivity to ease yeah. some of these. Uh, the 4G is sold only on regional capitals. Mm -hmm. Total 4G capacity, according to MTN, and all of this, is about one by one, a million. You know, a million, you know. It's for the it's, number of subscribers, yeah, we yeah. need to grow. You know, that. we need to grow. And people think it's very expensive. So, mm -hmm. So uh, the new project is to move Ghana to digitalization. Okay. You know, South Bank, uh, there are a lot of companies who do, you know, I mean, Amazon, you know, they, they create the digital, mm -hmm. no more cellular or telecom, you know. Uh, so that is a new, uh, how do you make sure that all teachers, all doctors, all workers of, uh, you know, multimedia, you know, have, are connected in their homes uh, first. You know, you are mobile, you can do whatever, but mm -hmm. your homes is for the comfort to enjoy you know, internet or Wi-Fi is, you have peace of mind to work, you know, so those are the things that we are, we are aiming at as a new project mm -hmm. that we are about doing. Wow, uh, that's fantastic relaunch. stuff. And uh, we hope to connect uh, the first phase, about a million people, once we finish all the uh, discussions mm -hmm. of the policymakers, what to do. Mm -hmm. Because there are too many technologies, I don't understand some of them though. I, <laughs> I, I, you're just a visionary. Yes, yes, and and, and you're going to make this happen. IOE. Yeah. So we put it together, we go and employ 100,000 young Ghanaian okay. and the kids uh, in every village. We're going to empower mm. partners. Uh, we're going to empower, you know, franchises, yeah. you know, to do those things. And it's working. Apple has joined. So mm. we're creating uh, Apple, uh, uh, you know, provide Apple devices for people. Okay. When uh, Kolebu, you mm. know, last week the presentation, and it was very fantastic, right. uh, the demand. So it's going very well. Okay. But we hope that by, by, by June, July, after doing all the you can policy start issues, rolling out, uh, yeah. we can rolling out and... Uh, uh, we certainly will be watching this either, space. Yeah. So we're just uh, getting ready to wrap up. Um, we're going to take our final break. And then when we come back, uh, we'll hit the back straight. And I'll share with you the lessons I've picked along the way in this conversation. Stay with us. Don't go away. You're welcome back to the Executive Lounge uh, with me and my guest, Dr. Prince Kofi Klujusin. And uh, as we come to the end of our conversation, uh, I'd like to, you know, let's move away from all the stuff that you've done. You know, <laughs> what do you do to relax? Last time I bumped into you, you know, we, uh, we were, we were, we were catching a flight <laughs> somewhere. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> you know, but um, apart from dreaming big and, you know, um, traveling the world and looking for ideas, well, what do you do to relax? Oh, you know, I have a very beautiful family, you know, a wife and four children. And uh, they're enough to give you realize or give you on your toes, you know, for realization. That's right. And, uh, but uh, I do a lot of things, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I play tennis sometimes. Okay. You know, I'm not a good golfer. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But most of the time, yeah, I like to relax mm. when I have a moment, mm -hmm. you know, I sleep a whole lot. Yeah. And I walk around, you know, and I visit friends, you know, I'm always engaged. So, I am not really a public person, you know, you know, per se. Uh, any moment I have me, I have like just to relax, you know, and uh, sometimes I go to the village, mm -hmm. you know, what I way with the, with the village folks. I have a farm in okay. the village, so sometimes I go to the farm, okay. you know, to work out with the time there. But my major realization is to see how 
and get the next generation to be mm -hmm. up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, that gave more realization, you okay. know, you know, more up and running to empower them, mm -hmm. uh, to give them hope, which is lacking in this country, uh, to give them a lot of hope, and uh, probably to provide the next path of trying to move Ghana to a knowledge-based economy. Mm -hmm. Then I can relax, you okay. know, and make sure that Ghana achieves its goal in my area. In your area. Everybody is doing very well. The government, you know, in other areas, they are doing well. But in my sect, I think that today I'm the only one, I'm the only Ghanaian around, you know, to be able to be in this business, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And the good news is that we managed to assemble most of the major companies who are assembling on one consortium. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and also it's an African project. So if you finish, you'll be an African technological center. 1,500 you know, square feet of, you know, meters of floor of all equipment uh, by the time we finish. So that makes me very happy and relaxes me. That's good. Well, yeah. very happy to hear that. Yeah. And uh, I've had a great time talking to you. Um, and I share uh, my five lessons from this conversation. For me, number one is that um, you should be aware of the things around you. By awareness, uh, uh, your story teaches me that you observed the importance of the change in technology, uh, right from the pocket calculator to typewriters to computers and today to the digital age. That awareness gives you a better scope of what opportunities there are. Number two is that when you dream, you should dream big. Um, <laughs> even though you started with your 12 disciples of pocket calculators, um, you've gone on to still, in spite of the things that have happened with uh, the Celtel business, you still are dreaming big in the same sphere. So no matter what happens, you keep going after a big dream. And number three is that uh, perseverance. Remain persistent. Um, if you're going to really succeed in life, it's not about the size of your dream. It's about the fight in the dog. How much more you want it better than the next person so that if a door is closed in your face, you keep knocking on other doors until someone opens and gives you the answer you're looking for. Number four is that you should be future-minded. The things you do are not about you. Because you're only here but for a moment where it just flashes on this earth. But the things we do can live after us. And so if you think about the future generations, your actions will be noble. And many people will remember you for that. And finally, uh, make time for family. You know, they keep you grounded and they give you a reason to do some of the things that you do. So uh, five things I'm taking away from this conversation. I hope you've taken that and more. Uh, we'll be back with more on the Executive Lounge, but a big thank you to my guest, Dr. Prince uh, Kofi Klujasing of uh, Celtel Networks. Uh, we appreciate you and uh, we appreciate the time on the show. Thank you too. I'm grateful. Sure. And for you, thank you for uh, watching. Catch the show again uh, next week when we bring you more on the Executive Lounge. And thank you to our friends at Villa Monticello and the entire crew and production uh, for making this happen. I mean, Shira Addo, as always, go forward, make rain. Shalom. Is this something you learned? Were you born an entrepreneur? You've got to start small. I have not allowed being a woman to hold me back. Credibility is not just making money, it's about making sure that you know people trust what you're doing. Law practice is not only about going to court, it's about advice. It's very difficult to, to hire somebody who's not motivated and then make them motivated. But one of the things that I'm known for is integrity. They have to see you as a person of integrity. Right. <laughs> Welcome to the Executive Lounge. I'm Inshira Adam.